It's time to round up a hot topic from the week, and this story is out of Austin, where an assistant city manager is on administrative leave for hosting a controversial seminar about female elected leaders. The March session shocked and disappointed members of the city's predominantly female council. The presenter, a man by the name of Jonathan Allen, said women tend to ask more questions and tune out financial arguments. The city is looking into how the training was implemented without the appropriate vetting. But not everyone is outraged. Some say it's the truth. So should female political leaders be treated differently from their male counterparts? That's our topic this half hour. We want to hear from you on our Fox 26 Facebook page. You can also weigh in on Twitter. Be sure to use the hashtag Fox 26 for life. Joining us live in our newsroom is our roundup panel. It's led by our senior legal analyst, Chris Tritico, our news analyst, Mustafa Tamiz, and our public policy analyst, Jackie Valley. Y'all there? We're here. There you are. There we All are. right, good to see you. All right, before we get into this topic, uh, Chris Tritico needs to settle the breakfast battle. Look, once the, and for the all. Fox 26 breakfast challenge is finally in. After the third round, it's Chris Tritico 2, Nate Griffin 1. He can't. I have no time for this foolishness from you today, Chris <laughs> Tritico. He can't. Hello, hello, he Jay. Can't. He's got to get ready for the Rockets like game. Come on. No time for this foolishness, Chris <laughs> Tritico. <laughs> he can't catch me, Sally. He can't catch me. All right, That's enjoy your Shipley donut. <laughs> there okay right. so let's talk about this now right apparently now there's a majority female on Austin City Council and that is so shocking that they needed to call in somebody to give a seminar on how to handle women in politics the, the biggest problem with this is nobody told this seminar speaker that it's not the 1950s anymore and we we treat women a little bit differently than we did then this is the silliest argument I have ever heard of for this guy to come in here and, and make these type of comments about about women in politics it's it's backward thinking it's 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 a time gone by I'm I'm stunned I'm stunned by it if you can't tell um, the city manager I think who's up uh, Mustafa the city manager this falls on his back yes so I, I was thinking of something men are from Mars women are from Venus and the Austin city manager and his trainer should be sent to Uranus or, right? or he's out of a job. Anyway. <laughs> very cute. Look, <laughs> very cute. Look, I, I say this with, with a broad <coughs> perspective. I'm a son of a, a strong woman and a, and, a, and a husband of an amazing uh, woman that has given me three sons. My gender has led political organizations and religious organizations from the beginning of time. And we have nearly brought this plan to an end multiple times. In the last century alone, we've had two world wars and we've had two cities that were, you know, nuclearly bombed. So uh, I think if the other gender takes over some, uh, uh, some governing body, I am more excited than anybody else. I think that having a little bit more talk and a little less fighting, a little less gridlock is probably what we can use. So girl power, you know, go show Austin City Council, show them what it's all about. Jackie, I like the this fact that he says girl power. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> this, this speaker who was a uh, former city manager in a small city in Florida said at this seminar, women ask too many questions and do not like to deal with finances mm. and should be spoken to differently than men. Now you were on yeah. city council in, in Sugar Land. Yeah. Did you expect to be treated differently? Well, when I was on council, I was the only black person, the only person under 50 and the only woman. So there are a, a trifecta. So it was pretty <laughs> much me and a bunch of older white men. <laughs> and, and, and so, but I will say t about my colleagues, no, they did not treat me differently. Uh, they put me on very prestigious committees and they appreciated the assets that I brought to the table. So thank goodness they're not backwards like some of these people. Um, the fact that we do like to ask questions, I don't think that's a female versus male thing. I think that's someone that's actually wants to get to the details. That's why our residents and our citizens hired us. So this is really um, sad uh, that some people do think this way, but unfortunately, as far if you look at statistics, we're only making up, we as in women, only making up a quarter of the positions held in elected office. So if you're still so much of a minority, then of course people are going to be surprised that when we do have an uprising or a large number of people taken over, people are going to be shocked and make some crazy comments like they're making here. I want to, when we come back from Sally, I want to talk to you about what 
caused this person to say this, which is really more shocking than, than what he said. But I'm going to go to Sally. She's monitoring our social media. Mm -hmm. He also suggested that women aren't as likely to go through agenda packets to find answers to questions <laughs> they're asking. And so that's prompted the hashtag what women ask as we go to Twitter and see uh, what some people are saying about this. This person says, did they cover anything in the training about how men sometimes have trouble hearing women's voices? And then this person says, unrelated to my job and asking only on my own behalf, but what concrete action is going to show that this culture is going to change? It's sexist to make these generalizations about women, right? Or is there something to the idea that women do process things differently? Well, it, it, hmm. probably do process things differently. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, if you examine just what he said here, women ask a lot more questions than men and they're analytical. What's wrong with that? <laughs> That's probably good on a council meeting. Now, this thing about men not being able to hear women, I've been married 31 years. My wife says that all the time. You're not listening to me. That's probably different, though, Mustafa. <laughs> um, <laughs> this guy, this is what really kills me about this guy. Jonathan Allen's his name. He said that he had an aha moment when he was driving his 11-year-old daughter to a volleyball game, and she asked 15, 10 questions in 15 seconds. He said, I had to patiently respond, and then I said, aha. That's how I have to deal with women on the commission. Come on. And, and he was specially flown in from Florida to give that talk. To give that talk. <laughs> you know, look, uh, th this is, I, I think we're, I think a lot of people are making light of this, but this is a serious topic because in the workplace, in political circles, um, there is an inequality in the gender. You know, we do pay women less in this country than men. And until we begin to create that balance, we're going to continue to make bad decisions. And we've made bad decisions in our country. We've made bad decisions across the world when men were in charge. So I'm, as, as a father of three sons, I'm ready for women to take over because I think we will build a better world. This, this idea that uh, women in politics should be equated to 11-year-olds is, is the thing that's more, most offensive to me. It's offensive and it's ridiculous. And I think we need to focus on the fact that we don't have enough women uh, actively involved in the election process. It's because it's sometimes we have to ask for money and, and sometimes campaigning can be brutal, especially when it's very local, a very smaller town, because it becomes more intimate and more personal. And some women just don't feel comfortable doing that. So what we need to do is maybe empower women, help women, and get them more involved, maybe through sitting committees, sitting commissions, get them involved with the city, and, and have better positive examples of women in leadership roles, women in education, and women in, in a, a elected office, so they can see examples of where they can be and so you're in favor of more women being involved in the political process that's why you're probably going to support Hillary Clinton for president of right? course not <laughs> <laughs> I, I am but look, <laughs> we got to wrap look, real quick look, but but look I think women are 54 percent of the electorate and and women have a more comp a better competitive position for down ballot races just by their name right. so I think that in the future we're going to see more and more of that and that's exciting